This is module number 16 for the subject of strategic human resource management. What we will talk in this module? We will talk in this module about the changing character of the workforce, means employees. When we talk about the changing character of workforce, Actually, there can be a number of factors. For example, one of them is how work has been changed or how people see the work itself. For example, on the right side, if you look at the age integrated uh, model of workforce, you can imagine that in the past, usually people were first completing their education, then they were joining the work and then they were thinking about having some leisure time at the later part of their age. I mean after the retirement or when they were not able to go to work. However, what changes have occurred in the last 10 or 15 years that these three things have these three things have changed or these three things have mixed together. For example, People want to have a layer time, people want to have a work, and people want to have education at the same time. Now, you will see that many people go to university university for education ke liye jate hai, to gain academic qualifications so they can grow in your, their profession. At the same time, they go to a job. Or at the same time, you might have observed that they are trying to find some time to for layer or to enjoy their personal life. So it's not very conventional what we had in the past that people were first going to school, then to work, and then getting retired and having a layer time. So this is slightly, you might have observed, changes have occurred in the recent years. Average age of labor market exit. So this is men and women data, but if you look at age data of men and women, you may find that the average exit of labor market or the average exit age of people from the labor market has reduced in the last 10 or 15 years. Even in Pakistan, I was talking about at one employer and they were considering or they have decided to retire the people at the age of 60. Previously, it was 65. Some people, they opt to get retired early. So it has some implications that later on you might be um, having a succession planning who would be taking place of these people who will opt to get retired in the early age. So similarly, over and above the changes in population trends and social changes also influence how long people stay in full-time education. So people in full-time education, how long they will stay? For example, if you people remember, the bachelor degree degree in the last uh, uh, five years has been changed from two years to four years honors degree. So people are expected to stay in the education for longer time if at least they complete their bachelor degree, which is comprises now almost 16 years, which was 14 years in our time, or might be some people. Uh, you know very well. So legal age to join full-time work. Uh, in European countries and in, um, in the Northern America, the legal age to join work has been increased from 17 to 18 years of age. So one year has increased. Employer might have to think about that the supply of labor would be less in the next few years because the people who want to join full-time work they have to be of 18 years of age before they think of it. So changes in people' uh, uh, perception about work and other life aspects. People are thinking about uh, their life aspects slightly differently. It has serious implications for people' loyalty to, loyalty to their work, the time they want to give to their work, or how much time they want to spend, or how much life they want to spend at work. So these are the social changes and trends. Similarly, different generations and their expectations, values, and goals. We will talk about that in the later module. What are the expectations of the different generations? For example, the current generation, 
the uh, generation we had 20 years ago or the generation we had 50 years ago, their values were different. Values, what you like, what you prefer. So your values were different, or in other words, what you value. So the social system has uh, influenced the people how they see the work or how they see their job or how they see their organization or employer. So the workforce globally comprised different generations, uh, but in the early 1950s, the workforce was comprised of almost the same generation, the generation before the internet age, before the WWW. So people from different generations have different values and attitudes and goals, and they have different expectations. At one workplace, you may find that there are different generations are working together. Is it good for the employer or is it bad for the organization or employer? We have to think about it or we have to see what research suggests about it. For example, Generations Y, 1981 to 1995, uh, is more concerned about different issues with issues such as corporate social responsibility. This is what we will talk about in some other chapters. But it suggests that the generation Y, the people who were born uh, between 1981 to 19, 1995, they are more concerned about corporate social responsibility. What it is, what organization is giving something in return to the society. The age after that, or the people who were born before that, they were or they are less concerned about what organizations are giving something in return to the society. But the people who were born between 1981 and 1995, according to the research, are more concerned. Uh, similarly, the changes in workforce, uh, uh, that is the employees, is the work-life balance. Nowadays, people are more concerned about having a balance between work life and personal life or in other words, work and life. They want to have a balance. What they gain from employment such as skills, people are loyal to those employers or people are loyal to the um, organizations, they provide trainings. It's not about the financial benefits, economic benefit and social benefit. Remember guys, why people work for an organization? They work for an organization to receive economic benefits, and social benefits. One of the economic benefits is when organizations provide you trainings, when organizations develop you or help you to gain new skills, knowledge, so that will help you to stay in the labor market or move from one place to another place. Anyway, making it short, not seen loyal to employer and do not expect to stay with one employer. These are the recent changes in the global labor market that as compared to the people loyalty, what we can see in 1980s or before 1980s, it is hard to see in the current era. People are less loyal to the organizations, which means that the employee turnover is increasing or employee turnover is high. For a minor benefit, for example, a little increase in salary, a uh, little benefit, for example, if you get an employer close to your home, less distance to travel, people don't mind to change the employer. While this was not the case in the early 1980s. So these are the recent changes or social influences that has impacted on the people or workforce attitude and behaviors toward work. Thank you.